So good morning, everybody. Thanks for thanks for joining us. I'm Darlene Swistock from the Buckles office. And we are happy to welcome our new colleagues from uh, South Orange for today's training. Thanks for attending. Um, and I'd just like to turn it over to Nick from Overdrive. Thanks, Darlene. So yeah, thanks, thanks again for joining um, today, guys. I'm going to go through um, the same same uh, thing that I did yesterday in terms of what um, your patrons can kind of expect um, in a couple of different ways um, within the, the Libby app when they make the, the switch or um, simply add the, um, the new digital collection inside Libby. And then um, also just a couple of quick things uh, inside Marketplace for those of you that, uh, that do some shopping and recording in there. So let me go ahead and share my screen and pardon my um, little helper to the back. She's just patiently waiting for the window to get opened again. <laughs> she is adorable. <laughs> Either that she's waiting for 15 seconds of fame, right? <laughs> Can you guys see my Libby screen? Should be showing my libraries? Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, yesterday I removed a library. I'm just going to do the same thing again with this demo library because I can always kind of add this back again. Um, but you'll notice that I have five different library cards in here. So depending on what um, you guys kind of decide to do with your eLibrary and J um, access, uh, patrons may be simply just adding a library card, but um, it sounds kind of more, more likely that they may be needing to remove one as well. So I wanted to kind of go through that process um, for you guys today. So um, you'll see all of my cards listed here. I got here from the main center menu from Libby. If a patron goes to libbyapp.com, um, they can um, sign in to Libby using a setup code that they get from their phone. So if it's easier for them to do this on a computer, they certainly can. But the same functionality will be present in the app, whether they use a tablet or a phone as well. So I'm seeing all of my cards here listed. I'm going to remove this look at Libby one. So if, you know, if we're kind of pretending as far as the example goes, this this would say uh, eLibrary and J for your patrons. They're going to click manage cards. And then the key is kind of remembering what color that card is. It should have a logo here on the corner of the card as long as the card's verified. So if I click on this, it's going to show me this Libby icon. I know that's my look at Libby card here. Now I can add another card to the same library. So let's say example, um, you know, you may have a family that has multiple cards. They could do that here. What we want to do for this example is to actually remove the, the card from Libby. So I'm going to click on this actions button and then remove card. It's going to always prompt the patron, you know, just make sure that they're, uh, you know, aware that this is going to wipe the card from the device. I'm going to remove this card. And then if I go back, you'll notice that that library is gone. And I mentioned this yesterday as well. I tend to use a setup code when I'm setting up a new device. So, you know, if I, you know, update my iPad, for instance, or clear the cache or cookies or something like that, I may need to um, set up Libby again. So I always just kind of get a setup code from another device, whether that's my phone or a computer. And then I can enter that setup code in Libby and, um, it'll add all of my libraries um, to that device again. So um, so that was kind of removing a library card from your library. So uh, conversely, what if what if the patron wants to add the new Buckles um, uh, digital collection to Libby? So I mentioned yesterday, we kind of know that, you know, uh, Buckles or eLibrary and J are consortiums, really. It's a group of libraries. Libby is really listing any kind of digital collection like this ClevNet, for instance, is a group of libraries in the Cleveland um, area. Um, so it's still kind of considered a library in the Libby world. So if for the patron, they're still gonna click this add library button. And if they search South Orange, right now, all they're gonna see is this eLibrary and J icon. Once we set up access, they'll also see buckles here. Um, or conversely, if we removed access to eLibrary and J and then set up buckles, they would only see buckles. You can also just search for the digital collection name. So if your patrons are already familiar with the acronym or name of the group, they'll see this there. They can click on this. It's going to take them to Libby. They're not going to be able to borrow anything at this point, although they are seeing the, the general kind of homepage. They still need to sign in with a card here. They're still going to use that same South Orange card that they've been using for eLibrary and J. But once they sign into Libby, 
that buckles card would be listed here, would have a different color here. And then they can kind of manage the card if they wanted to change a color or rename a card, they can, um, especially if, you know, let's say for instance, you have kind of two similar cards like this for eLibrary and J and buckles, you know, maybe I wanted to, um, you know, switch the, the color on um, this one, for instance, I can do that. So that's kind of the, the key differences for patrons when they're going to be going to add uh, the new digital collection or, or in Libby terms, their, their new library inside of Libby. Um, as far as other changes inside the actual app for patrons, the big thing is um, kind of mentioned yesterday that a lot of your patrons likely have um, cards at multiple libraries right now. So for instance, Clevenet's my main library. It's located right down the street from my apartment. Um, so this is the one that I kind of tend to use. Um, I try to use um, whenever possible, but maybe sometimes when I'm searching for something, um, you know, it could be a situation where another library has um, a title a little bit sooner that I also have access to. So if a patron's kind of unfamiliar with, with having more than one library card uh, in Libby, this may look a little bit different. So this example is kind of a good one in terms of availability. She's got a lot of titles. So you can see most of these are showing the Clevenet color uh, library card color icon here. And then once we get down to this one here, it's showing this other library card icon, likely because this might be on hold or not available in my, in my other library. So if I click here, it's gonna show me, okay, well, my main library, couple of people already have this checked out. And then my other local library, the county library system actually has five or six copies. So it, for the patron, it's always gonna show them the best possible circ action is kind of what we call this functionality. So that's an additional kind of um, you know feature or uh, benefit that the, the patrons are gonna see if they have multiple library cards uh, within Libby. So that's just kind of the other difference that patrons gonna experience if, if perhaps um, you do go with that option of adding um, uh, buckles in addition to eLibrary and J. And then I wanted to hop in the marketplace as well um, quickly and show you one or two quick things, but I wanted to see if, if there's any questions on the, the Libby portion for, for patrons before I did that. Um, Nick, I was hoping you could just repeat what you said about managing when a patron gets a new card from eLibrary NJ versus Buckles, because I think the staffer who had that question is here today. Absolutely. Yep. So let me share my screen. So in Marketplace, most of you guys are probably familiar with the support tab. Um, this is where you can do um, some things like enter technical support, invoicing, authentication support tickets. It's also where you see all of our contact information as far as my territory team goes. If you're currently within eLibrary and J right now, you have the capability of merging user IDs, which can come into play uh, at times if you're giving a patron a new library card and they've already had some activity within Libby or Overdrive in the past and they don't kind of want to lose that history or current holds or checkouts. This is a function that you can actually merge the barcodes from that old one to the new one. However, with eLibrary and J, any um, librarian or most librarians will have access to this um, this functionality in Marketplace. However, in, in Buckles, if you need that done, you do need to send it. Um, is it Margaret, is it just you and Dave? Uh, yeah, Dave's taking care of it right now, but you have to send a support ticket because I think what you said was doing it in eLibrary and J doesn't actually do it for Buckles. It would not transfer over, no. Other thing that I um, wanted to mention for those of you who have kind of shopping access or uh, reporting, um, and you're going to be kind of looking at, at certain things in Marketplace is the difference um, in terms of the Advantage Plus sharing amount in Buckles. So everything is shared upon purchase um, in terms of mirrored access and one copy, one user content. That does include this 100 checkout um, model. I do want to kind of point that out because that has been a, a point of confusion. 
for for some advantage plus libraries when you do purchase one of these it does get shared this does behave like any other metered access content so these 100 checkouts would be available to any um patron within the library if if you purchase one of these so this example, pretty popular book right now, obviously, um, the shared collection is always going to be the top line here. So I'm in Tina's Advantage account, just as kind of an example here. The shared collection has purchased one one copy, one user copy. And then this 45, you can kind of deduce that this is likely a metered access concurrent use checkout because that's really the only lending models that are available. So if I were to click on this, you can see that there's there's 41 checkouts remaining. This should say 40, 45. It probably just hasn't updated yet. But there's 45 out of the 100 checkouts that the consortium has purchased as well. So those are readily available to all of these holds. They've been delivered to, to anybody that had an active hold. And it's just kind of on the patron to decide whether or not they want to suspend the hold like these 41 have, have done, borrow the, the title, or cancel their hold. You'll also, also notice this Advantage Plus number here, which means that another 20 libraries have shared units of this title. Um, so all of these have been purchased in the last, looks like five uh, months or so since the, the title was released. And those are all available to patrons as well. If I had purchased any on my Advantage account, so let's say, for example, if South Orange, if you were to purchase um, uh, a one copy, one user, uh, a title or copy of this, this title, it would show up as a one right here. And then that would also show up in this advantage plus, um, line as well, because this is a total of all the shared copies as you can kind of see here. So you're probably going to notice quite a bit more shared copies in this line. Um, even though elaborate and, and Jay, um, I know Tina and I worked together to, to get, quite a few libraries to share a lot of content. Um, it's just an automatic sharing that, that happens at Buckles, which, um, so you're probably gonna end up seeing quite a bit, like you can see here, another popular title with a lot of shared um, copies there. So really not much different outside of that um, in terms of what you're used to seeing as far as your Advantage account goes um, in Marketplace. Everything's really the same. Um, it's just the uh, the additional amount of shared copies that that happen within within Buckles versus eLibrary and J. Um, Nick, would you mind showing the deep search again like you did yep, the other day? absolutely. Can you guys see my Libby again? Yep. Okay, perfect. So if I search right now, um, it's showing me that I'm active in this CleveNet library. So you can use that example again, if, if a patron had um, both Buckles and eLibrary and J um, in, their, um, in their Libby. So if they search for, this is just a random golf author I've been using as an example because he doesn't have a lot of titles that are owned by libraries. You'll see right away, um, just like I kind of showed with that Macamer example, this, this is already presenting me a different option than this one based on the availability. I'm guessing that Clevenet probably hasn't bought this title because it's pretty new. Or they have one copy. So it's just a longer wait time for this one. There's probably just more people waiting at, at my local library than the other one. Now, you'll also see this deep searching is available in the filters of this list. This is coming up um, because the results of this search are less than 100. With that Debbie Mackimer search that I did, the results were 500 plus. So Libby's just automatically going to perform a deep search if the results are 100 or more. But if it's uh, 100 or less, then it, I actually have to physically activate the deep search. So you'll see this option here. It's also available in the in the search filter icon. So if I click this, it's going to open that filter, and then I can activate deep search. It's going to show me these 13 titles that I'll now probably see some additional. So there's that other library card option, another library card. This is another title that wasn't owned by either of those other libraries uh, at first. And then you'll see the option to place notify me tags on some of these other titles that were opened um, or found as a result of that deep search. And tag this one. So um, 
kind of similar to the Macamer example, you'll still see that best possible circ action, um, but when there's 100 or less um, total uh, results, you'll have that option to perform the deep search and then get additional results, whether that be um, at another library that's inside Libby or um, titles that aren't owned that meet the search criteria. Now, I didn't ask this last time, but I am curious, um, does that notify the library that the patron's interested in that title as well? It notifies every library. So that'll, if uh, one of our digital content librarians goes to purchase in my digital library, they're going to see that tag in there. Chances are they're going to buy that book. But every single library that I have in here, if they log into Marketplace, that data will show up there. Um, it's anonymized um, for patrons. So the, the library never actually sees which patron, but they see that that interest is there. So let's say um, Clevenet ends up buying that title, that notify me tag would still be showing up in the My Digital Library Marketplace account. It would just show up that the, that the tag had been satisfied um, because it recognizes that Clevenet had purchased that title and satisfied the tag in terms of, of me as a patron. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Okay. So it's definitely a good question in terms of, um, you know, especially if, if uh, continue the access in, in the library in J, um, if they place a notify me tag regardless of which library they do it in both of both of those advantage accounts would actually see the the tag any other questions on either the marketplace and or or libby and i think i showed this let me share one more thing i think i shared this yesterday um i'm going to be kind of summarizing a couple of things from the, the Libby help site. Just as a reminder, patrons can always get here really easy from this get some help right from the main menu. You'll get a link to the help site. Um, but right here under cards, there's just a couple of quick articles in terms of removing a card with nice screenshots and then adding a library as well. So I'm gonna put that um, together for you guys in a Word doc, um, just the that you can kind of have or distribute if you want. Um, but then patrons will always have access to this themselves through the app or, or online as well. Hey, Nick, mm -hmm. it's Darlene. Uh, would you would you mind just going to the Overdrive Resource Center and highlight that like you did? Absolutely. Was there something on the Resource Center that, that I brought up yesterday? I don't remember. Uh, just, Remember. I guess, just a reminder what what's available because there's what's some available here. Yeah, some absolutely. Good information. <laughs> yeah, I love. This is probably the <laughs> my favorite thing that that we do um, for our partners overall. There's just such a ton of uh, great content, whether it's training or marketing materials. So, for instance, marketing and outreach. We have this survey that you can complete at any time to be shipped a, a Libby marketing kit. There's always very, very timely, you know, mag this, we had a new magazine update. They're kind of going bonkers in terms of circulation. There's a marketing kit specifically for magazines here. Uh, book club, auto marketing, lots of things that you can add for social, you know, whether it's email blasts, Facebook, marketing things. If you want to update graphics on your website, there's all kinds of things like that here. Um, if you're looking for additional training, the library staff training section has really nice. Pieces. Something's acting up here. I apologize. Let me see. There we go. So the training section will always show upcoming webinars that we have going on. We do these how to train your community on Libby, which is always a nice nice one for getting uh, folks started. Or if you have staff that's not um, super familiar with how to use the app or troubleshoot. Um, and then there's always kind of um, specific ones on different types of content. We do uh, sporadic ones on introduction and marketplace. Um, this is quite similar to the ones that I've done for Buckles um, in the past. And then there's always on-demand webinars as well. So we just did one 
that kind of went through the new magazine um, interface for patrons uh, a couple of weeks ago. There was one that was done on, um, you know, spreading budget out, whether that's using CPC or metered access concurrent use, variety of kind of tips and tricks in marketplace. Um, getting started with, we do these sporadically as well. And then the how-to section has a variety of things, whether it's anything that you could possibly want to learn on marketplace to um, really kind of the nitty gritty of, of using the the app itself. Um, and then for those of you that, that have Canopy, uh, there's stuff in here as well. We've migrated, migrated all the Canopy um, marketing materials and, and resources to this, this as well. So, um, but I'm always happy um, to go through stuff one-on-one -on -one with you. If you have kind of specific questions in Marketplace, something's not working right to you, or if you just kind of want to go over something one-on-one um, -on -one more in depth, um, always happy to, to jump on a Zoom call and, and do that with uh, whoever needs um, help, so. Excellent, thank you, Nick. Mm -hmm. Always. Always good to have reminders of the wealth of information that's available. Yeah, and the resource. The other nice thing about the resource center is that it's available from any computer, so you don't have to be logged in um, to Marketplace to use this or anything. So just resources.overdrive.com can be utilized from any computer. Anyone else have other questions at all? Maybe maybe we'll give it a minute for people to get their thoughts together. If they do have any any questions, they can um, either put them in the chat box or they can ask them. And maybe I'll Hoping just the folks uh, live at South Orange had less technical difficulties today. Yeah, you never. Yeah, <laughs> always. It's always it's always interesting. You know, the <laughs> the, the gremlins seem to be hard hard at. <laughs> Hard at work. Oh. All right. So while we're giving everybody um, a minute to see if they do have any questions, I'll just kind of close out with some some housekeeping. Um, I would like to thank Nick for um, presenting another uh, great class with a lot of good information for us. I'd like to thank everyone from South Orange for taking time out of their busy day to attend. Um, we will be sending um, I'll be sending a post-event email with an evaluation form for today's class. We will also share the recording with you if you have any questions. Um, the evaluation form is especially important because we ask for feedback on this topic as well as future topics that you would like to see. So if you could just take a minute to respond, that would be greatly appreciated. It is, it is anonymous and your feedback is very helpful. So I don't see anything. Should we give it a, a 10 second countdown, Nick, before we uh, <laughs> say <laughs> class is dismissed? Appreciate everybody's time. And if and if you have something that you think about later or just feel more comfortable asking me one-on-one, -on -one, um, don't hesitate to reach out. Awesome. Thanks so much, Nick. We appreciate your uh, your time and your expertise. <laughs>